So if you've been working out at a commercial gym long enough, you've probably seen this happen where somebody has 315 loaded, they're uh, finished their workout and they're gonna strip the bar down and they're not really thinking about what they're doing. So they pull all the plates off one side and what happens? Well, typically all the plates will fall off of that end, the side that they didn't unload. Um, in this case, the rack's a little wider and so in here, it just floats this side of the bar, you can see, um, and it doesn't actually tip. But, you know, this is kind of interesting because you have uh, unweighted on one side and weighted on the other, and so you know that the, the balance point, the tipping point, is going to be three plates on one side and no plates on the other. But what people typically haven't seen is what is going to have to be on that side, on the, the left side, in order for a 45 pound plate on this side to tip. So let's take a look. We're gonna put the 45 pound plate back up here. And we're gonna start adding plates. And so most people, when they kind of think about this, they're gonna think, well, it's probably the same. It's probably, if it's zero and three, it's probably one and four. But look, you know, nothing, right? So let's see five. Five must do it, right? Nope. How about six? Seven? About seven and a five. There you go. So now we have this side completely not in contact with, with the hook here, which means that it's not produce, it's not supporting any force. So apparently the answer is uh, is 410. That's what you have to load uh, on the whole bar in order to get a 45 on this side to tip. So, so what's actually kind of going on here? So uh, this, is, this is an important series of concepts that you need to know if you want to understand how to lift correctly. And so if we have the plate, if we have the bar loaded symmetrically, what's going on is that the center mass of the system, of the symmetrical system, is located right here in the middle of the bar, the volumetric center of the bar. And the center of mass can be thought of as the point about which all surrounding mass is evenly distributed. So if you think about like a sphere, we'll say made out of a consistent material, it's going to be the volumetric center of the sphere as well. Same as a cube. And in the case of the barbell, again, it's right in the middle here. And as long as this center of mass is inside of the base of support, and the base of support is between these hooks right now, as long as it's inside of that, then we don't have any problems. We're not going to have any tipping. But when we take plates off of this side, or like I just did a second ago, I added plates here, that center of mass is going to shift to the left. And it's going to keep shifting to the left. And as it does so, these hooks are going to change the force that they support. So in the case of a symmetrical load, so let's say there's 300 pounds on the bar and it's symmetrically loaded then this hook is going to support 150 pounds and this hook is going to support 150 pounds. But if it's asymmetrically loaded, we'll say it's, it's more loaded on this side, but it's all still 300 pounds, then the center of mass moves to the left, which means that this hook is going to support more weight and this hook is going to support less weight until we get to the point, like right now, where the center of mass has shifted all the way to this hook. And and it's quite obvious here that this hook is supporting no force because it's not, even, it's not even in contact with it. So it can't be supporting any force on this side. It's supporting any weight. So this is supporting all of the weight. It's completely balanced on this hook. And if we were to add a little bit more weight to that side, maybe another 5, maybe another 10, I don't, I don't know what it would be, then the center of mass is going to shift off. It's going to shift to the left of the base of support and therefore tip. So as, as long as the center of mass is inside of the base of support, it won't tip. But that doesn't mean that the base of support is balanced. It doesn't mean that the base of support is supporting symmetrically. So this is kind of a fun demonstration, but how, how does this really relate to lifting? Well, in, in lifting, and especially in the starting strength methodology, we force symmetry. So we tell people that when you bench, the bar needs to be level and it needs to be square and it needs to not be twisting around or anything like that. 
And that is so that your muscles are stressed symmetrically as well. Because just like the case here, if, for example, let's say I was benching, if I shift the whole bar symmetrically loaded to the left, then now my left side has to support more weight than my right side, which means my left side is getting more stress. This is really easy to see in the deadlift if you have someone who is, again, shifted all the way hard onto the left, they're not falling over. If the center of mass of the system were shifted so far to the left that it was off their base of support, they would just fall over. But people are able to shift their center of masses so that they're not symmetrical, so that they're not in the middle, but such that they're not falling over. This doesn't mean it's good, again, because if they're shifted to the left, it means that their left side is getting more stress than their right side. And their right side is going to become a limiting factor in the ability to get stronger, in addition to the fact that lifting symmetrically is going to be the most efficient way to lift and therefore get strong quickly and safely. So think about that the next time you're squatting or deadlifting or especially in the bench press. It's super obvious in the bench press. And I hope this was interesting and I hope that helps out. Thank you for watching.